Hi, everybody. This is Ray. This is Life and Vibe. And oh boy, do I have a good one today. So let me just break down. I want to look at Foodie Booty and her recent sushi mukbang. But before we get into that roast of what she's eating today as an unmanaged type 2 diabetic, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background. I'm a registered nurse here in the United States of America. I have over 10 years of experience. And my goal with this channel is to expose and highlight where individuals or even businesses are misleading and giving misinformation when it comes to health and wellness. While they do this, they are not only gaining money from their endeavors, but they're also hurting good people along the way with their misinformation. So if you do like this type of content, I do hope you do hit the likes, you hit the subs, make a little comment. I love to read those, especially if they're funny. All right, so just to let you know, this video is for entertainment purposes only. It's a little bit of opinion, commentary, roasting, and some ranting. And as we know, it's a form of criticism with a good dose of sarcasm. And we're aware it's the lowest form of wit. So those of you who think I'm not being a very nice nurse, sometimes we do have to have those come to Jesus moments, as we say in the industry. I have no personal dislike, and we don't I really encourage any bullying or hatred on this channel. And really, you know, please try not to put hateful comments down. But like I said, we do like those funny ones, so keep those coming. And just as everyone knows, we get to use this material that we're going to be looking at today from this particular creator on YouTube who I find to be very problematic. So just heads up. And uh, just always like to say for anybody a little more sensitive to this type of content, you know, we might be talking about things to do with mental health. It could have things to do with abuse. We just don't know which way food going to go today. There's certainly going to be a little bit of eating disorder. We just never know. She never knows. She never trigger one of her content at all, which as a healthcare provider and for somebody who does tend to use her health quite frequently to garner sympathy and money from her audience, you think she put a couple of little trigger warnings out there. But, you know, she's not a mental health professional nor a health professional, though she does like to believe that she could take people on a health journey. So let's just take a little peek, see at what Miss... Uh, what she now likes to call herself everyday Miriam is up to today, guys. So let's just take a look, shall we? Let's bring her to the stage because she's been doing all sorts of crazy things with adding numbers to her subs. And we've got the proof she buying potentially. Let's take a look at this guy. Let's bring Miss Foodie to the stage. Or everyday Miriam, as I should be naming her now. Here she is. Okay, so... And I have some receipts here that in one day, she managed to gain 800 subs. Yes, on a channel that is not getting a lot of views, in fact, is losing views. And people are saying they're having a hard time finding her. She gained 800 subs in the day. And she is so close to that 100K sub goal that she's aiming for. And she's done this with 423 videos because we know she's had to private or delete quite a few. Oh, my goodness. Here we are. Here we go. Here we are. It's it's Miss Miriam here. She has claimed to have diabetes type 2, which I would not be surprised if that were not the truth because she's been out there with the glucometer. But we haven't seen the glucometer for a while. Glucometer, MIA, foodie. Where's the glucometer? We haven't seen you do a blood sugar reading in quite some time since you've been talking to people about your diabetes and you've used that to try to garner sympathy from your audience. But you continue to eat these carb-loaded garbage meals. Let's just go through. Let's scan on through. Just all of these meals. Look at this. Look at that. Rebranded the channel. Uh-oh, so much pain. Look at this. And we're going to talk about malingering in a minute and how foodie here malingering Miriam, Malarium the malingerer, whichever way you want to go around, whichever you prefer. Maybe it's Miriam the malingerer in this picture here. I think she's Miriam the malingerer. I think that's perfect for her. So much pain. See? Look, look. 
so much pain. Yet she was sitting in that chair, swinging that napkin in her hand like she was Topol from Fiddler on the Roof. And I'm sure you're going to appreciate that reference, foodie. All right, we're not going to look at this one. That's not the one we're going to look at. I apologize. We've already shared that one. We already roasted that one, girl. That's not the one we're looking at. We roasted that one. Get off of there. All right, back into her channel. Sorry. I just wanted to highlight the number of subs she got here, guys. And we're going to... Oh, my goodness. She just dropped a 12-inch spicy Italian sub mukbang on us, guys. Shoot. We suddenly got a two-for-one here. Oh, my goodness. I did not expect that. Well, I think we're going to be doing... Uh, we're just going to look at the sushi, and I think tonight we will live review the 12-inch spicy Italian sub monk bang. So get ready for that one, guys. We won't be doing that right now. We'll have that one later tonight. So, wow, foodie, it is popping it all out over here. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So, yeah, guys, tonight we will be going live uh, for a pre-Valentine warm-up um, just to review this. Uh, we have a ghost and hell on earth. Mm, okay, that sounds great. All right. So now we have a haunted apartment to bring the poor souls that do follow this individual into their audience. Okay, so what I did want to point out, though, is two things before we go and roast the crud out of the sushi meal that she eat. And, and then I get to look forward to trying to break down the, <laughs> we have a ghost hell on earth. Uh, debacle she just dropped down on her audience here uh because she gotta keep making that coin don't you fitty anyway yeah so yesterday if i bring up this let me do this okay this is yeah okay don't be shocked okay don't be surprised okay it's a video but i just want you to see at the stop let me stop the video ah stop okay all right i'm stopped the video i want you to take a look right here now she dropped some inappropriate stuff in her community tab yesterday which is why i screen recorded this but if you take a look right here, okay, and this is the this was just from yesterday. She had ninety eight point one thousand subs, four hundred and twenty two videos, okay, four hundred and twenty two videos. Yet today, she has been able. We'll add it to the stage. Let me scroll her back up. The other one was a recording, so I could add it on. She has only added. Well, she's added on a. Uh, three videos now because she just dropped the <laughs> whatever the ghost video <sighs> girl this is a floaters in your eyes i keep telling you you're not seeing ghost that's the diabetic retinopathy floaters that you're seeing that's not ghost girl you gotta get your eyes checked please get your eyes checked and your teeth just please please instead of just sitting there Go get some actual medical checkups in a country that potentially does not charge as much as, you know, here in the U.S. is expensive. I don't know. In Canada, you might get more healthcare services. But you could be at least going to some of the countries where they do, you know, dental and all sorts of work on one of your visa runs. Why aren't you doing that during one of your visa runs, getting some light healthcare? You could do a healthcare visa run. You could get like a twofer there, girl. You just don't think these things through, do you? No, you just rather sit in the hotel room and then 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 moan about it to your poor subs and audience members and you know membership people paying for that nonsense, some of them, even through premium account. Anyway, okay. So yeah, here she is back. You know, she's 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 had people and take a look at the views, okay, on her videos, just to see how are you gaining 800 subs, girl, when you've got views here of Falling views, 11, 9.7, 6.5. Well, you just released this and you've only got 6.39. If you were a big channel girl and you have a 45 minute and you are 100,000 subs, you would expect at least a couple of thousand views on that by now. Mm, you're just not showing the numbers. Well, see here, you use the word shocking way in. Well, it's not shocking when you eat that bloody looking avocado drink is it how is it shocking oh um, would you lose weight oh is it the one where your muscles atrophied or you got lobotomy or whatever the heck 
Here you got this, this, just look at all this. This is a person that has type two diabetes, okay? Unmanaged, obviously. Because you're supposed to, all the medications that she's been prescribed, supposedly, because we don't, you can't believe this person, okay? It's supposedly metformin and junimet, and both require diet and exercise. And the diet they do not require is a, a carbs, girl. Anyway. So let's talk about malingering. Because if you look at her live, Or look at these videos. Okay, she's done a lot of mukbangs. A lot of mukbangs. Rebranding her life. But let's take a look at the live here. And she talks about being in so much pain. And this picture of pain. So she just uses things to try to health updates live. Look, she's sitting here in the wheelchair. She wants to tell you bed bound era. Okay. All 14,000. You know, all these things that are regarding her health, okay? But yet, come over here to the videos, and here she is, tucking into all of this. So how are you trying to tell anybody that you actually care about your health? And how are you trying to garner sympathy from people when this is how you personally care for your health? It's just, it's really bad. And it's using people. And I don't like people who use people. I got a real thing for that. So why am I calling her a malingerer? Well, as I stated earlier, I am a, I am a registered nurse here in the United States. And I have over a year in graduate school trained to be a nurse practitioner. And I have time working over a decade with patients and working and seeing how they interact, even with us as healthcare providers. And we obviously take everything that everybody says truthfully because there's so many videos out there. Oh, these healthcare providers do not listen to me. And this is healthcare provider didn't listen to me about that. A lot of times what you'll find out is often these people, not all, but a number turn out to be dishonest or potentially exaggerating their symptoms or using these symptoms. And this is what falls into this idea of somebody being a malingerer. And I think foodie definitely uses this particular tactic in her personality to garner sympathy from her audience. So let's actually look at a real uh, piece of evidence here because being a registered nurse, I have applied to try to be part of the YouTube health platform and want to ensure that the information that I give is actually back based into real medical information. And we'll be real quick. And I'm going to try to figure out how to put chapters on. So you guys can just, if you just want to hear me roast her about the sushi, and I'm going to get into it, don't you worry, um, then you can do that. And people are like, oh, you're so mean. Well, you know, for some people, they need to hear that this is just wrong, okay? Because we've tried every other tactic. This is just my way of also showing out people who scam people. And I'm not nice about scammers because I don't like them. I don't like them using health, even if they do have poor health, to try to garner money out of people and lie to people. And this is what this individual does. And so I do take a stance on that. And that's why I don't have a bad, hard, that's why I don't feel bad. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I don't feel bad. Let's add this to the stage. Okay. All right. Oh, this is about the deepest delight. Sorry. That's not the one I meant to add. Sorry. Actually, I need to take, sorry. That was about deepest delight because she certainly does present some of that as well, actually. Um, that she likes to dupe people and she seems to get a lot of delight from it, uh, laughing and giggling. You know, when she was talking, especially about being in pain, she was really enjoying uh, being a duper that day. So, yeah, that's that's one of the other things that I was looking at um, because she seems to demonstrate quite a lot of that. I, uh, as I said, as a medical professional, we have to deal with these things and we do study psychology um, and we'll refer people for mental health services. So just trying to preface all of this so people don't get upset that I'm pointing this out because we have to. Otherwise, we're not doing society any good. And these people get then get away with it. All right. So what's malingering? Because she's malingering Mariam now, Mariam the malingerer. So basically what malingering is, and we'll make this fast, as I said, is a falsification or profound exaggeration of illness physical or mental, to gain external benefits, such as avoiding work or responsibility, 
seeking drugs. Oh, oh, let me think. Wasn't it just yesterday I roasted into a Jesus out of you because you're out there trying to tell everyone that you got pain and you need good pain medication? <sighs> Classic, girl. Classic. Classic. Avoiding trial and law? Oh, no, not foodie. Weren't you the person trying to avoid paying your taxes for a while? There's all sorts of speculation about whether you are or are not paying your taxes in Canada. There's, supposedly, everyone says you set up a payment plan, but I don't know if we have proof of that or if there's actually money's going out. We don't know. It's Canada a little bit more lax than the United States or the UK, I think. So who knows with foodie? Let's keep going. Uh, seeking attention? Never. You mean with titles like such pain and lonely and uh, posts in the house? You don't, huh? you don't think any of this is a seeking attention? Come on. She's not seeking attention at all. That's the opposite, isn't it? <laughs> Avoiding military services. Well, she would if she could. Leave from school. Well, she dropped out of school, apparently. So that's done. Paid leave from a job. Well, no, she just left her job without clocking out like she was supposed to. And that's what's called time theft in the world of employment. And she lost her job for that. And she got a little bit upset about that for some reason. She couldn't understand that the policy was that if you left the building, you were to clock out that you couldn't just be still on the clock and going out and beezing on a backup sandwich somewhere in your car or, you know, doing whatever in your car or getting high in your car, whatever you were doing in your car, allegedly. <laughs> All right. So anyway, this is not factitious disorder, okay? When we think about factitious disorders, that's all in that Munchausen stuff. And that's, that's not foodies, well. Foodies are malingerer. Okay, she's definitely probably into that, in my personal opinion. And this is not diagnosing her. This is for entertainment purposes and education purposes only. This is not to give any type of diagnosis for this person. But this is what I believe is the type of personality traits she is displaying when she is on YouTube and working to gain money and attention from her audience. Here we go. All right. Da -da -da -da. This is the best part here. Okay, because this really um, does this. Okay, so really the, the, the external or what's known as the secondary gain for someone being a malingerer uh, is that it is, <laughs> is obviously, you know, they show poor compliance with treatment and stop complaining about the assumed illness, okay, only after gaining the external benefit. So once she wasn't gaining any benefit from talking about the diabetes or talking about her sciatica, then so, so, so suddenly these, these illnesses for her disappear. But once she needs to start gaining sympathy, she'll start to exaggerate things. And don't get me wrong, I do believe Foodie has some health complaints going on. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's how she uses these to manipulate the audience is what's so important. And then we'll see how she tries to use any of these tactics when she goes to tuck into this sushi meal. All right. So just really what they do, we talked about that. Okay. Talked about them wanting it for drugs, attention, and that they, you know, they have this poor compliance with treatment. Okay. Which we know she is very poor with complying to any of her treatments and has years of documented evidence of this online from after her hysterectomy and not following through with her hormone therapies, which I believe caused that alopecia hair loss and not following through with managing her type two diabetes or the non-fatty alcoholic liver disease or potential neuropathy or whatever, you know, probably dental issues she needs to follow up with the cardiac issues that she has demonstrated. There has been talk that she may have potentially had a DVT in the past and was on blood thinners. She has no gallbladder. I, the list is long, but it's when she picks and chooses to use these things and she has to be careful because a lot of people know that these are illnesses that have been brought through lifestyle. 
and the foods that she's chosen to eat and the drugs that she's chosen to take and the lack of physical activity she's chosen to do. And so when you have somebody who's so chaotic in their life, she still needs to go on a sympathy and money from people. And so she's definitely discriminating more of this. So anyway, let's get going before I lose my audience because I'm a good roaster. Go ahead to the roast if you want to, people. I don't know. Okay, so this is the sort of thing that we could potentially be looking for quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay. The malingering is associated with an antisocial personality disorder and histrionic personality trait. To get an external secondary gain, the individual fakes an illness that can be a physical or psychological nature. The patient consciously lies about his or her condition to get a benefit, and upon achieving the benefit, they stop complaining. No medicine or intervention can cure malingerers. Upon detailed history, the malingerer may exhaust their excuses and give up. <laughs> Mark discrepancy between the individual's claim, stress, or disability, and the objective finding and observation. Lack of compliance with a diagnostic evaluation, treatment regimen, and follow-up care. Presence of antisocial personality disorder. Any combination of the following four complaints. The medical legal context of present lawyer sitting. Okay, so we don't, she, she's not really doing that. So what do we need to do? We need to watch carefully for discrepancies in person's behavior while taking prolonged detailed histories. Deep dig. So this is something that we as medical professionals are made to be aware of. It's the malingerer. Okay? Because they come to us. So we have to be very aware because they may be coming in drug seeking. Like, like foodie to an ER. So it's really important that you kind of take a look to see what's going on with these folks. All right. So a deep dig, deep dig deep into the person, patient's personality, antisocial personality disorder, histrionic personality traits. This is somebody who at a very young age began sleeping with much older people. And when her mother became upset about it, she then faked an unalive event, which meant that she ended up being removed from her home. And she did, she did this at around age 14. So she was showing signs of conduct disorders at a very young age and was to, in order to gain attention of which she's openly spoken about on her channel. So this is why this is kind of, you know, find about the legal status of the patient. Well, <laughs> I don't know what they mean for this, but we know Foodie is like doing visa runs in Kuwait and has, you know, um, you know issues with all sorts of, things in Canada legally. We, she's had bankruptcies. So she has had multiple times where she has had just differing things happening. So, uh, oh, the legal status. Uh, no, sorry. I was talking about her legal, st her illegal status, we should say. So we have to find out these answers and we have to watch for exaggeration of psychiatric symptoms like hallucinations or delusions. Girl, you're saying you're seeing ghosts in the house, man. <laughs> what are you trying to prove? <laughs> Me right? You're doing a great job. I'm just here doing this for ed education and entertainment purposes. But this is pretty poor on for you, girl. Malingering Miriam. All right, let's see. What will we do? Appearance and behavior may appear disheveled, uncombed hair, untidy clothing, no eye contact, no rapport building, irritated, hostile behavior. <gasps> Moon. Well, you know we're going to have to speed Foodie to 1.5 because she talks so slow. And we don't know. Answers low or, or elated and never normal euthymic. Uh, uh, oh, God, I'm so terrible at those words. Just like normal rhythm. <laughs> like, <sighs> cannot mimic lack of effort and henodonia, like, you know, lack of energy. Thoughts, exaggerated delusions but cannot mimic formal thought disorders like schizophrenia confused at times. So, she, you know, just that bizarre delusion, perception, exaggerated hallucinations, both visual and auditory. Girl, you're putting out ghost stories. <laughs> um, they have good insight about the disease and must always acknowledge suffering from the disease they fake. Well, I don't think foodie necessarily faking. You know, I think she just exaggerates. I think she's doing more of this part where um, 
exaggeration of an illness. I think she's more exaggerating, though I think she's got stuff going on, but I think she's exaggerating. She probably has some neuropathy going on, girl, but that's no reason to run to an emergency room to get controlled narcotics like Dilaudid. <laughs> We'd have a lot of people on controlled narcotics if it were for neuropathy. They're already, you know, questioning the use of gabapentin. So, and that's even getting more strict in its prescribing because people have a can't abuse gabapentin. So, yeah, she's even complained there's no gabapentin out there. She really complains about the drugs. Ah, <laughs> oh, they have a history of hospitalization, medication. Well, you're very non compliant with anything going on. I mean, they just say do all these different labs. Okay. Anyway, oh, that just is, no, she don't have that depression. Well, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. Who knows? If the man's malinger denied, but the problem is, may show aggressive behavior. <laughs> malinger usually avoids psychiatric consultation. Um, it, prognosis is unpredictable. Malingering keeps on malingering until his extensive external game is fulfilled. Ugh, it's diagnosis. Difficult. I'm not diagnosing, I'm saying. I'm just saying that she seems to do some of this malingering. Oh, it probably goes hand in hand with the narcissism. Because <laughs> we know that every time that everyone says for her to get therapy, she really wants to avoid that. I don't know if that's because she just doesn't want to address problems because of <laughs> she's not. She is an interesting study. Dr. Grande, we need you. Calling Dr. Grande. Calling Dr. Grande. Can we get a can we can we get you to to to, a, to, to do an assessment on booty with the, the OSHA scale of <laughs> the ocean outgoingness? Yeah, whatever it is. Okay, I'm not a mental health person. As I said, I am a health practitioner and I would be asked to look out for these things. So for me to, to, to kind of present malingering to you and in the context of foodie is not unusual. <sighs> Just because she's, you know, she's going back and forth about these leg pains and she seems like she's drug seeking to me. All right. That's just, you know, my nurse's spidey senses going off. And I just want folks like you. I feel like she uses YouTube as her own uh, personal GoFundMe platform. So if you're a good person, keep your money. Put it for yours retirement or your grandkids. Do something good with your money, man. Don't give it to this lady. Please don't. You know, we're going to skip through the cameo because that's not worth advertising for this person. You know, she's only got one more day. All right, let's put it at 1.5. All right, let's get the screen back. Okay, she obviously doesn't do the fitty beating music anymore because she no longer filled a booty. Oops, let me get into my stream yard. Let me bring foodie to the... Let me bring foodie to the stage. Everybody's excited. Everyone was hearing me roast, roast you, girl. So I don't feel so bad when I start roasting you. <laughs> it's not just a reveal. It's a roast. So you're buying subs. You're malingering. And let's see if you're in any pain today because you were in extreme pain yesterday. All right. Let's, let's go. Okay, guys. Let's continue to see how this individual tries to scam her audience as we break down a uh, online scam let's go you get special day uh, well hello guys hello welcome back to another video all right no no you already had your chicken and vegetables all right so i'm having sushi today so that's not a drink she'll explain what it is it's not healthy just listen to her her narrative around this and her tone of voice. Well, it's hard to tell with the tone because I got her at 1.5 because she's boring. Let's go. One, two, three. Drop a number of sushi plates that you, rolls that you would eat 
if you were at a meal, especially if you were five foot one and had raging type two diabetes. And know that the majority of the food in sushi is rice. Yes, rice has a tendency to uh, increase the glycemic index, girl. Uh, your diabetes endocrinologist told you to eat like a palm full of rice. That was it. A little, 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 like maybe half a cup. Half a cup, maybe. You've got three rolls of sushi here. Your pancreas hates you. Look at you. Look at this. Look at this. I, I didn't even look at the paws. Girl, you are expanding out of that chair. You're going to have a lonely Valentine's. I know you're not supposed to, to celebrate it, but in the back of that Western girl pick me head of yours, it's it's in there. It's in there. You're going to be lonely because we know Salah not keeping those sheets warm. Not yours anyway. Welcome back to another video. Wasabi, I won't be needing that. I hate it. Oh, uh, why? Probably actually one of my favorite parts of sushi. I don't really eat it. I get sometimes the vegetable sushi, a little bit. You know, but maybe I have one tray. That and a little soup. That's usually good for me for a lunch and some fruit. <laughs> She's hiding her drinks now. She doesn't want us all seeing that sugary, juicy drinks. Because that's all she drinks as a type 2 diabetic is the stuff you're supposed to drink when you're in a hypoglycemic crisis. But no, not foodie. Really. Foodie chugs down, you know, 54 grams, 60 grams of a sugar drink along with who knows, you know, how many carbs she's eating. I don't even want to know how much carbs she eats. I, I don't want to calculate it because it's frightening to think that somebody is this unmanaged, but then she's trying to get money out of people. So I, you know, my sympathy pop kind of come to the end on this one. Keep going, girl. I'm here till the end for you. Oh, they gave me soy sauce, but and I the end, soy sauce. I mean, we don't like so good. I bought it when I was trying to uh, the super healthy. Anyway, I like the full salt one. Too bad. <laughs> All right, not that I'm tr not trying to be healthy, but you know what I mean. Okay, so this is my favorite sushi. Uh, no, you're not trying to be healthy, and you laugh with deepest delight there, but you're not duping anybody. Not even the low sodium. Oh, the Loeb's light soy sauce is free of sodium. Still has a fair amount of sodium in it. So usually, probably anybody who's had any cardiac difficulties, which I understand you may have had in the past, probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have any type of soy sauce, actually. But, you know, you don't know what healthy is, but you've had the audacity about two weeks ago to come out saying healthy, healthy meals and stuff because you like to play with the algorithm. Because you got to get people to your channel because you're just losing views. So now you're going to talk about having ghosts. I'm telling you, girl, that's not ghosts. That's the floaters from your diabetic retinopathy. You need to get those eyes checked out. Stop making up stories about ghosts. And I don't even think that should be something that you're supposed to talk about. I think certain religions have things about talking about things about ghosts. And so I don't think that's, you know, uh, going to work with your new channel members that you're trying to get in there. Oh, my gosh, girl, your content going everywhere. i got a specific focus, medical scammers. <laughs> People, because I know enough of, it's always the nurses who are like, oh, hold on a minute. That's not in the right place. That doesn't make sense. That's not how that works. You don't do that in a hospital because we're the ones who work the floors all day long. 20-hour shifts I've had sometimes. It's hard to get past a nurse. <laughs> and I'm watching you, girl. I got my assessment eye on you. I'm watching, your, I'm watching you con your audience every day. Look at those hands. Mm. Because they don't use, like, nori seaweed. They use like a soy wrap. Probably not even totally sushi. Everything is fried and has hot sauce drizzled on. But you know. All right. So let's set this. Well, then it's not sushi, is it? So once again, you are a liar because you put sushi in the title. But what you should be actually putting in the title is malingering Miriam 
lies about losing friends and eating fried garbage that's going to kill her pancreas. Girl, that should actually be the title. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't mind helping you out. Let's stop it. Let's get to, to business here. Let's talk some stuff. Let's talk some smack. No, I'm kidding. I'm uh, uh, no, that's what you do. And, and again, all the things that you said you were going to do about having the personality change, girl. No, you're still the same. Same old, same old, same old con, same old trying to get people on your side. You know, nobody likes the trauma dump. It's boring now. Everyone's already done that on TikTok. <laughs> I'm trying to be a nice human being. So. No, you're not. Because yesterday you said your favorite thing to watch on video are plane crashes. You don't take care of your animals. Your animal has not had veterinary care, has not been fixed, which means she goes into very painful heats. You ignore your hamster. You left one cat so bad it died, probably. It, I think it died. Ten bit. Ten bit died. Apologies, folks. That's uh, I thought I turned off my phone. I didn't turn off my phone. I apologize. Oh, hold on. Up. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. That's me having a social life, foodie. Uh, you don't have friends. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I'll make sure I try to hide that. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll get back to that. All right. Hold on. Let me stop my stream. I gotta go back on that. Hold on. Let me stop. Let me stop. Sorry, I don't want to dox anybody. <laughs> that's quite ironic, foodie. Um, that's my my good friend of mine. Um, get in touch with me. Um, so we can go out and have drinks tonight. <laughs> so, um, can you can you tell me about being a YouTuber and not having friends, or is that just because you have a personality that nobody wants to be around? Just you know, clarify, because I don't think it's what you do for work, sweetheart. I literally think it is you. And I think maybe a deep reflection into who you are as a person could be really beneficial. But you, we know you're not going to do the work. So let's just watch you take out your pancreas. That's what I'm here for. That's what everyone's here for. They're here to watch me just be horrified that you're going to eat all this fried fish. And look at what you've just loaded all this stuff with all these creamy sauces and things. Any health benefits? that anybody could potentially have who doesn't have, you know, uncontrolled type 2 diabetes, which I would not recommend being near this rice. But for those who do have their health under control and they're, you know, and like to indulge in sushi, if you have obviously the salmon that's fresh and you maybe can have, there are ones where you can have rolls that are more vegetable based, like the hand rolls that don't involve a lot of rice, more vegetables and potentially other items in them. More of the little, you know, they do use a rice wrap. So you always do want to be careful with sushi and diabetes, I think is what I'm trying to say. For others, picking a mix of their salads and some of the rice dishes, because you could end up consuming a fair amount of rice by the end of a sushi meal. And if you're not exercising, or doing anything to actually burn that sugar up, which is what it's going to become in the body, and it can't get into those cells and turn into energy because you don't have sufficient amount of insulin, then you're not needing to eat all this rice. And this person is very clearly trying to get sick in front of everybody in order to go on the sympathy, I think. And it's very hard to want to be sympathetic towards somebody who you see this happening. I mean, you do feel sympathy, but then you don't, especially when she's so manipulative about it as well. It's just really bad. So, yeah, just be aware. This is not the meal that should be ate by somebody. What are you doing? Get your hands off that soy, girl. Look at the hands. Look at this. Do you not already see the fluid you're holding? I didn't even see this. Now I'm looking. Do you see the amount of fluid? Look at the hand. Look at this. And then you're grabbing for full sodium soy sauce. Nobody would want to hang out and eat with you. Why would anybody want to be there with you? 
losing friends. It's You know, you have to reflect. Maybe it's time for reflection. You'll never do the work on that, though. So, but you'll just trauma dump this out to people and hope there's, you know, fools out there who's going to pay for it. And I hate to call you that, but she's fooling you. I think a lot of you should try to do the same. Let's do a nice human being challenge. No, I don't want to be nice, right? A lot of you are going to say that because it's cool to be mean. Maybe when you're 16. Why are you bringing up about 16? I'm not bringing any of these things up. It's not about hate. I'm here as a medical professional highlighting to people who may have originally gone to your channel thinking that they were going to be seeking health information and following a journey with another person who was concerned about their health and found out you're a malingering user who cons people out of money and tries to get sympathy with clickbait titles. That's who you are, girl. So get that out of it, okay? Maybe time for reflection, hey? It's not about hate. It's about grown adults saying, you need to stop this now. Stop the madness on this. You need to get off the internet and you need to stop using people. But you won't. You're always going to find tr try to find a way for a con. And now your con's kind of running dry in Kuwait. And you're stuck in that little apartment and your views are dropping. It's hilarious, actually. I love watching the demise of a channel while you buy subs. It's hilarious. So when you're uh, an adult or a grandma, there's a mean grandma online, I'm telling you. It's, it's just cooler to be nice. You're a mean grandma because your internal body is probably about 90 years old with all that garbage you put inside of it. It's okay. <laughs> I'm being mean to my cat by not giving her any, but she had her chicken and vegetables. All right, so that's all done. Do you think she can actually taste the food now? I don't think so. She can taste whatever the, the panko sprinkle she put on there. And I have water to drink. So, Bismillah. Oh, okay. Uh, what, can we see the water? Put the water out. No, no. Because next to the water is a strawberry juice that's got about 75 grams of sugar in it. Right. <laughs> this is crispy crab and something else. And something else? It sounds like you're trying to describe the medications that the doctor give you at the clinic, girl. Those scanty details that you can't tell anybody about what actual medical treatments you're really receiving. But you want to go on live, talk about your pain, squirm, and then dance around like Topol. Oh, you're a liar. Check the reference out. You'll love it. This is shrimp. Fried tempura shrimp with a few and carrot. So I wanted to talk, something was on my mind when I think of sushi. It reminds me of the sushi. You know what was on my mind when I see you in sushi, girl? Raging type 2 diabetes, uncontrolled and unmanaging, and malingering user con artist. Okay, what do you think? With a really close friend of mine. You don't have close friends. You have people you try to figure out how you can use. There's a difference between having friends and there's a difference between trying to figure out how you can use, manipulate, and con people. Okay? So just get that out of your head. You, you don't know the difference, girl. You're a liar! It was like... Oh, I'm already going to... Sorry, sorry. I forgot to apologize for the ridiculous chewing noises and the clicking... Ch uh, jaw and the gross noises she makes i have to try to put the sounds up because she, her sound quality terrible she's been a youtuber for years okay she don't have a ring light she got a bad internet connection she has terrible sound quality she's just just it's all the in and out on the filters everything i mean like just all bad okay so i'm sorry I just, I, yeah. So, misophonia, take the earbuds out. She oh, she forgets to warn people about that, too. But she probably has a food fetish. Paying so big sums of money to listen to her. Chomp, chomp, chomp. You go, girl. We would go there pretty often. It was like an all-you-can-eat sushi place. Where are your napkins? Where Why do all your stories involve food? Why do all of your stories involve food? 
oh, that's a perfect pause face for you, girl. Right there, we got a little bit of nyim, nyim. What's that do? Share. No, I don't want to share that. But yeah, you got perfect right there, girl. You're perfect right there. You're perfect. You look great, girl. You look stunning. Anyway, <laughs> at least she's got the chopsticks out. Just covered in all this creamy dressing. But you just, all your stories involve food. You're not, not now out in your life? No, obvious from looking at you. What? Oh, napkin, Maybe napkin alert. Maybe $27. And then we'll give you a menu. Well, I'm glad to see so you're at least using a napkin it? now, okay? Thank God for that. Pardon me for, you know, I'm not trying. I just, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, none of us can take all the food around your mouth. And, and, and we're done the slovenly behaviors too. You're a grown woman. You're going to be 40 soon. You, you keep going on about the lip fillers and this, that, and the other. Hopefully, you can give yourself some, some lip fillers for your 40th birthday. Just go ahead and do it. Just do it. If you want them, do it. No one's stopping you. I'm sure they've got some great aesthetic services out in Kuwait, girl. Just treat yourself. Go on. We'd love to see you out here with some lip fillers on your filters. Let me take all you can eat, okay? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the way a diabetic should do it. Just take down one huge, enormous bite of carb like that. Gosh, I cannot believe she just takes it down in one huge old bite. I mean, I can because she's got to eat fast because she can't trigger those food fullness hormones. The ghrelin, I think, is how it's pronounced. I'm pretty sometimes ghrelin, uh, which I believe is the hormone that indicates whether you're full or not and she's got to get this food down fast and she got to get it before this hormone fully kicks into action because it you know takes a little bit to come into play it's pretty fast but she's got to get past that so she got to get it in quick man and oh boy does she she get full that i you know wow that is Girl, you need you're in the wrong place. You need to be in these competitive eating contests. Oh god, the cat is hell. Oh no, the hostage cat situation going on here. People you're fanning. Okay. How many days has that cat been held hostage? We need to have a hostage counter on here for the number of days this poor cat's been held hostage by this lady. Is that why you wanted to go to Iran? Iraq? Which one is it across the border? I don't know. You know, I'm not talking that they're going to take your cat. I'm just saying, you're going to become one of them. You want to have, like, first-hand experience? Because you, you'll end up in a tricky situation, probably. Because you're just not that bright. She's mooning you guys. She, she's trying to get away from you, girl. She's so anyway, not... I would usually start off with, like, tempura shrimp. Oh, okay. Like fried shrimp. Well, okay. And hash browns, stuff like that. Yeah, I, yeah, that sounds exactly what the average Japanese person would start out their sushi meal with. Pray tell, continue. Sounds like you've been in the heights of Tokyo. And you can order noodles, sushi. Hmm. Doesn't sound like a Western palate hit that food at all. Sounds very authentic. Continue. I'd love to hear about how a, a Canadian living in Kuwait enjoys Japanese food. Continue. Baked mussels with cheese on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, girl. You just can't get away from that cheese, can you? Mussels and cheese. God. <laughs> Sounds like the worst combination ever. <laughs> ah, you're like jonesing for this stuff, girl. <laughs> Ah, ah, ah. Oh my God. This is like the saddest story ever. Continue. So your friend was a good storyteller. I'm glad because you aren't. By the way, 
<laughs> yes, I'm still injured, but the show must go on. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. There's the malingering. I'm still injured. The show must go on. Then she laughs. Duper's delight. Okay, that's pretty much what happened. Okay, people, we just, that's, and then, you know, shifty eye over here. Can you? Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh, squinty, squinty. There goes, there goes, there goes the fact that she refuses to wear glasses on camera. She doesn't get proper follow ups with her eyes. And the way she doesn't manage her diabetes, I can promise you, as a healthcare professional, I would be concerned at this time and would want to have her evaluated for the diabetic retinopathy. Because it's a blazing behind those eyes, girl. That thing is those little those little extra veins are gonna be pulling on your retina so hard, girl. You'll potentially just go fully blind. And guess what happens? You can't bees your way out of that. Anyways. You're gonna go blind. Um, so I used to go with this really close friend of mine that I've known for a long time. And like people always ask me, like, do you have friends? <laughs> Who? You say people ask you, which would necessitate you having friends, and you don't have any friends. So who's asking you these questions? <laughs> and I realized that a lot of friends I used to hang out with before I had a YouTube, or I mean, at the beginning when I had a YouTube, I still had still hung around with them. But my friends in Canada, I don't really talk to anymore. Maybe a, maybe like one or two on like WhatsApp. Um, is that because they don't want to talk to you? And the two WhatsApp, uh, that's Pete's and Nada. Allegedly, you can't do anything here, me in the United States. And anyway, Bill, good luck. You have to go through the US. Oh, okay. How? Being on YouTube can be like for me and my oh, kids oh, being a YouTuber. I want to stop right here because I love the fact that you're talking to us on the camera. You do have a napkin at hand, and you do understand. I, I mean, I hope the neuropathy not hitting the side of your face like that already, girl. I've never known not to have sensory nerves around the mouth to tell you you've got a big old piece of food just hanging right here, just huge. How do I zoom up on this real fast? Let me zoom. Can I zoom? No, I don't think I can when I'm recording this way, unfortunately. But yeah, I just take a peek see. She's talking away about losing friends. She's got filthy nails here. Girl, you need to clean your nails, okay? I'm just saying. You're eating your food half the time with these hands of yours? And why are your nails so dirty? Oh, is that with the hair dye? Is that the hair dye when you dyed your hair the other day? Huh. Anyway, you, you don't usually use a lot of napkins. And you're talking about losing friends. And we know most of your friends, you don't have female friends because you don't have the type of personality that would warrant other women to want to be friends with you. You would sleep with their boyfriend if you could. <laughs> you have those vibes, girl. You just have shifty vibes. So usually girls like you end up hanging out with other girls like you. And then girls like you end up hating each other and then doing all sorts of cray and wild stuff. Because I used to see it back in the day. <laughs> so I don't know. I wouldn't want to be your girlfriend. I'm just going to be fully honest. I don't seem like you. You're no fun girl. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, that's a way to get rid of it on camera, isn't it? You got a big old thing of food. Yeah, you should, yeah, you got caught, didn't you? Just licking that food right there. How much does the feeder fetish folk pay for that one? How much does that go for? $10 to, to lick the side of the food off your lips? That's what this is for. I forget she does the feeder content. Oh, God. I You know, I always forget. I just always think she's actually out here as a hot mess diabetic. But... No, I forget there's a whole fetish content thing underlying her dark traits that are going on over here. 
you know, that she kind of, that's why she got to get the food and then she got to lick it off with the lip because that's what they like. Oh God. Okay. Well, I'm sorry for the audience who has to like tolerate her, her fetish content as we go along. Around the time that, a couple years ago, around the time that I was going through like deep addiction and just like um, being in an abusive relationship and everything. How are you not in deep addiction now? How do you not see the food? You, you always talk about your eating disorders and your binge eating. Wouldn't that also be an addiction? One addiction pacing, replacing another addiction? So how is your addictive behaviors any different now? How are you not displaying addictive behavior now? Food, just because it's a necessity, does not mean that the way that you consume and the type of items that you choose to put into your mouth would not be considered addiction. You've just taken addiction and instead of it being something that's been outlawed by the police, you've just put something else in its place. So you're still an addict. Do you understand? <laughs> I don't know what part of that you don't understand, but that's something that you need to fully understand and your audience fully needs to understand. This is an addict being supported. It's an addict. It's a food addict. I kind of started isolating like more and more. And I think just grew, I didn't, it's not that I necessarily am not friends with them, nothing happened. We didn't fall out. It's just that I just became so consumed with YouTube. And I think that for them, like I, I think even one friend. That's because you realized that you could do just nonsense on YouTube and make money and not have to have a real job because you were a time thief at your other job. So you have a instability at work history. And admitted to me like, it was kind of awkward for them that like because they would like see like for example i think like this one friend tried not to watch my channel because for her it was kind of awkward you know like it was like she felt like she was invading my privacy just by watching it because i wouldn't even exactly because you put your private life all out there and maybe your friends didn't even want to know that much about you did you ever think about that no because self-reflection is not something that you do. And it's something that people that have to vlog their content need to be really careful about. Trauma dumping out in the public sphere is never a good choice when it comes to content. That's the type of content that though it's going to get a lot of views at the beginning, it's always going to bite you on the old school. I can talk about these things to my friends. You know, I've said that before. I don't like unloading on people in my real life. When I would go out with my friends, I just wanted to have fun, eat sushi, go to a movie, go to the mall, talk about anything else. I mean, whenever I was working in an office, we would always just gossip about our work or whatever, you know? But Girl, that wasn't the stuff that got you your clicks and views on your content either. You just trauma dumped on your audience while you mukbang. <laughs> People were just there to watch you eat. They got trauma dumped along the way. But, you know, that was what people are there. And you're doing it right now. The exact same thing. You're mukbanging and you're trauma dumping so nothing's changed i thought you changed <laughs> nothing's changed but at one point my channel just became very dark and it's still i talked dark. about everything with you with like online with you guys and i didn't want to talk more about it to my friends you know i don't know it's just a totally different vibe in real life friends you know and we just grew up I, I'm sure this is just all a bold-faced lie. She put everything out there. She said she's just a very toxic person, okay? Let's just press it, preface this at all times when you're hearing anything she's saying. Try it with caution. There's lots of videos out there debunking about everything and everything she says. This is somebody who is a scam artist. So just don't get sucked in, okay? All right, let's continue. So hard. Like, I don't know if that had a lot to do with it, but I think it did have something to do with it because, um, and a lot of, a lot of, you know, those people, it's not like I had a ton of friends anyway. I had like maybe two really good friends that I don't talk to anymore. Uh, <sighs> well, something that everybody knows as they get older is that you can outgrow people and your friends over time, especially if you move around or do other things. If you stay in the same hometown and you're always hanging out, then yeah, potentially you could have these lifelong friends. I know people that have friends that go and visit people that they've been friends with forever. That's very common that that maybe once you know that they were friends at college every 10, 20 years, however often they can, 
They keep in touch, you know, by mail or card or whatever, but try to get up in person, you know, a few more times in their lifetime because they were such significant people at one part of their lives. But understand that they're not a necessarily daily part of their friendship because they're not just there where they are. That's very common in this day and age, girl. God, do I have to explain friendships to you? Jeez, God. You, that's right. Oh, God. I'm not going to talk about generational stuff, but this is a Gen X roast, girl. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard their side of it, uh, maybe a little bit, but I know for some friends, for some of them, it was like they were also. Girl, this was seven years ago, too. What? If you're talking about trying to change, why are you going all about the past? This is what you talk to a therapist about. You know, there's other ways to frame this with more benefit on YouTube. And yes, this is very clickbaity, losing friends. I mean, I promise you, Foodie is going through the algorithms and trying to find every clickbait title that there is. How do I know? Because I'm somebody who's recently started up a YouTube channel and is also trying to do research about the types of content that people enjoy watching or could potentially bring people to actually my medical content with my medical expertise as an RN and my kind of years of working with patients and kind of assessing people. And she is using these different titles. Just kind of look at what her titles are. And uh, this one's losing friends. There's been a lot about being alone, losing friends as we get older. So she's definitely, but she didn't get a lot of clicks on this. I don't know. She's just not getting up the algorithm, even with those nearly 100,000 subs. Kind of, they saw how like people would, you know, trolls or people would like invade my real life and try to ruin it and stuff. And they were kind of like afraid of that, you know? Is that because that's the type of people you attract? Because of the type of content you create? Because you're toxic? Oh, God, girl. How much are the feeders paying for that? So nasty. YouTube, alert. Well, fetish content, alert. Fetish content, alert. If a friend is not going to want to talk to me just because I'm going through tough things and stuff like this, then they're not real friends. But No, I it's because like you traumatize because... people, okay? I met, talk, I met some toxic girl like this through my church. And for some reason... She seemed to think that uh, she was a complete stranger who met me, always had stuff going wrong, you know, always like on threat of having to, to almost live in her car. And I'm just thinking to myself, okay, I'm one of these personalities that I don't have time for that. I don't get roped into somebody else's drama in order to, you know, feel that my life getting a bit more exciting. And there are people that really enjoy that stuff. And these people will go out and prey on individuals who they think they can bring into this and get them to do more and more stuff. She she would get mad at me for not wanting to go to an art gallery and pick up a piece of art she supposedly had made and drive it to her home and drop it off to her because I had a car. <laughs> I'm like... Because her car was as nice as mine, or she was scared to drive a car. None of these things were my problems, okay? Um, and I'm fortunately the type of personality that I have very good friends. And when we need to help each other, we are there for one another. But we understand that, that you just don't go. And when somebody meets you immediately and they just try to come with you with all of these stories of hardship, and try, they will look for the types of people that will really fall for wanting to, like the helper types so just be weary if you feel like your ability to kind of give these people sympathy is going to help them out be be weary be very weary like i didn't do anything really much to maintain the relationships you really know? surprising i get like relationship maintenance burnout how is that is that once you figure out you can't use them anymore And thus you grow further and further apart. I think it just started with the time in between connecting with them would grow further and further apart. And, um, you know. Wow. Eat a content terrible, man. Come to the warning, girl. Oh, now we get a napkin. 
just to, to satisfy YouTube. Uh, it's not for, you know, other type of content. Hmm. It's just a sloppy eater. Hmm. And that way, it can be isolating, you know, because, like, I don't have a normal life. Well, this is the life you have chosen. Okay? <laughs> I don't care if I don't have your face on the frame. Probably don't deserve to be shown. That's perfect. You, this is the girl you've chosen it all i hate to be that person that says that you have to make choices but you do you really do and you could decide to get stressed about it or not i tell you my older age i'm starting to understand that lesson more and more and it does take time to learn that lesson i will be honest but if you're not growing and understanding to that lesson then you're not growing as a person and we can see the evidence that you do not grow as a person your isolation, how you live your life, you sitting here eating three trays of carb sushi and getting so unhealthy that you can't make friends or participate in life is your doing and your doing alone. You need to actually take some responsibility in that. Your audience is not responsible for motivating you to do that. And they're not. And you don't really want them to either. You just want them in there going, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I can understand. It must be so isolating to be a YouTuber. It must be so difficult. It must be hard. You know what? If you do YouTube right, it feels anything but isolating. I can promise you. I love streaming with my audience, man. I have a blast. We talk about really good health information. So come and join me if you want to. We have a lot of fun. We keep it fun. No bullying or hatred in my thing. We don't name call people like this. But we do point out when somebody is trying to use people, because there's a lot of people that have come over to my way, Chantel, who've been fooled by you and your health journey. And they can see now that you're a con artist. And that's what I'm calling out, because I don't like you folks on YouTube being like this. Most people are kind-hearted and kind-natured, and you take advantage of it. So you out here with a losing friend sob story is nonsense. I'm 55 years old, girl. I have no concerns that I am not able to make friends with people. I choose to be more on my own because I enjoy it, but I have really good friends. My family is near to none, and that's just because I had a small family anyway. My mother lives very far away. We're not very close at all. Just how it is <laughs> after so many years of living apart. She and I were very different anyway. And that's, you know, I don't say a lot about that. But you really are stuck in the past, girl. And so you need to move forward. And doing this losing friends, this is a clickbait. It's about you. Nobody want to be around you. These are the choices you made to live in Kuwait and to choose this husband and then not learn the language of that country and not get healthy in order to actually go out and explore the country. So I can promise you, when I lived in Mexico, I traveled to so many different cities. It was wild. If YouTube had been a thing at the time, my channel would have been blowing up, girl, because I used to fly in and fly out of so many different places for my work. And I was in my 20s. And I used to go to places where I would be overlooking the Pacific Ocean from hotels in Ixtapa and then have to go give presentations for three hours about teaching adults or teachers how to teach English in the classrooms, depending on the age levels they were teaching. And I did that in my 20s, girl. So I my content would have been blowing up. When you're on social media, you're controversial. You don't have it all. You're controversial. You're controversial. If you don't understand how you, as a type 2 diabetic, eating this nonsense and talking about health journeys and then using your health illnesses then to, to literally rob money out of people's pockets, in my mind, then you don't understand who you are. And you don't because you're an antisocial type of individual who will never reflect on themselves. You're just, you're just a terrible human being. Keep going. Got 10 more minutes. God, I want to roast you so hard today. You're such a bad person. I'm glad you're losing views. I'm glad I'm gaining. <laughs> Thank you to all my new subscribers, by the way. Um, What's your taking? Should I take in all the sushi? At some point, 
Look at that. Right in there. Right in the right in the pie hole. No shame. Oh. There's trash really on the floor. She don't care. People love how you put that I trash on the like floor. Sushi, but I don't find sushi filling at all. I find it's like one of those no, of course you don't. Eat. Yeah, of course, of course, because you try to get past that that satiation level and get it in quick, and you just stuff, 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 stuff it in. That's what you know. I had boyfriends who used to say like stuff like that, but that was after they'd just been like running around outside for three or four hours. You haven't done anything. It's just that you don't get the same carb high, from the sugar that you used to. So you need to get more sushi in to try to get that high because you're an addict. And over time, as you eat more of this food, I've saw this with the fat hungry, hungry fat chick the other day looking at her stuff real quick. She's just not getting that sugar high because, you know, she's had it so much, she's just not lighting it up like she used to. And that's what happens. And that's what's happening with you, girl. And you're miserable with it. And this is all you got is talking about food. <sighs> You do live a miserable life. I will agree. I knock it full. I don't know why. Because you don't understand science. That's why. I get full eating rice, but not when it's in sushi form. Mm. Because you're just shoving twice into your mouth, girl, that's binded with sugar, pretty much. Probably sleeve in the also, food over there. Can you not talk with your mouth full, please? Illness. You don't. Oh God. Have the emotional, like the energy at all. Now, now you can see why I triggered about mental, mental health and so forth. Before I put this stuff out here, and she doesn't trigger warning her content at all. Is she? Oh, <laughs> that's a perfect pulse face, girl. Let's see what lies your mental health. What else are you gonna? Trauma dump on your audience, malingering. You don't get diagnosed. You refuse any therapeutic help. So why are you out here using these things? You don't get any help. Just use all this stuff. This is why I'm so tired of you. Sometimes. Uh, your audience not tired yeah. of you too. Oh, they are. Your views are dropping. So the people I do have in my life don't understand that. What um, people? What people? What people? I want to see a, a, a roll of names on the on the screen. You don't have to Jesus anybody. Salah not there. He's gone. Oh, somebody didn't pay for that shot. They pay for a pi per piece. Get the fetish content out. I could not have needy friends. What? You don't have friends. So how could you have needy friends? Like relationships, friendships do need work. <sighs> like any relationship. Oh my god. What color are your eyes you today to on these filters? I don't have nothing to give right now. What, money? Is nobody giving you any money? You can't get any money out of somebody? What, you can't get drugs out of somebody? Uh, Salah's sister not prepared to write you a prescription for pain? Even though, or a sister-in-law, there's somebody there who's a pharmacist in the family who's not going to lose their license because you're, you know, jonesing for drugs. And going on about your pain constantly. I understand that you have to have residency status in Kuwait in order to be followed by a doctor. And since you don't have residency, you cannot get proper treatment or care. So you rather just come online, girl, and complain to your audience about all these different things. You're a trauma dumper. The lingering trauma dumper. People lap it up sometimes, but I think some of them are getting kind of tired of it. I think you're running. You you know, I I'm not surprised you don't have friends. I'm I'm not surprised. You, you sound like a piece of work, girl. Nada. Hmm. Nada. Oh, God, here she goes. Oh God. Bobby, I won't be needing that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was so shocked by the 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 rice fall. <laughs> Keep going, girl. Get my mind off my own problems. What? And she had a way of storytelling. She's a writer, actually, so she has a very um, sorry good storytelling. 
I was so horrified that she picked the rice and then put it back into the plate where I know she's still going to be picking around for the food. So I'm sorry. I just, and then I, I, I don't know if I, I lost her in the story, but it doesn't really matter. She's boring as heck. Ability. And she would talk. Sometimes we would go out and just go out for dinner and then go to a cafe and just talk. She would talk for hours and I would never get bored of listening to her. Never. Because she was so interesting the way she would tell her view on something, you know? Sounds but, like you were listening in for the con. That's what con artists do. <laughs> you know? Difference between a good storyteller and somebody who's just boring. Like, for example, if you have something... I can let you know, Chantel, you're boring. Okay? You sit here for 21 minutes eating sushi uh, and you're pretty boring. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thing I'll agree. Oh, this guy got... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Something happens in the news, you know? It can be the most mundane thing, but the way she would talk about it and her give her spin on it and her insight, it made it interesting. Oh, the whole piece. Oh, Lord. Right in there with the food. She's the, the fetish content, everyone. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. She's not just sloppy. There's monetary gain in that food. She got to lick it. Watch. Watch. She got to lick it out. I wonder how much. Oh, there it goes. See? Look. See? Look. So That's $20 on the fetish market. Right there. See? Somebody's paid for that content. One piece she pays for that. Nothing. She's, I, swear, I don't know. It's so weird. She's like, sit and see. But I know I have some. Just gonna... She's just a con just artist, man. Look at the con. She don't care. Mm. He just cares to get that money. Oh. Huh? What did you just say? Ow? Did you just say Ow? Did you bite your tongue or is that the infected tooth we all suspect that you have? Because you actually had to chew, chew that huge piece. That piece, that last piece going in was so big, she actually had to chew and swallow. Because she usually just gets it in, one or two little chews, and then swallow. But I think she said, ow, there. Let me see. I don't usually go back. But let's go back. Just, just a few seconds. See what she says here. Because look, she looks, she actually looks like she may have, <laughs> but she never admits to the real things going on. Because that's not the ploy she wants to use. Oh. Oh. Why are you saying, why are you saying ow? The tempura cut my, the roof of my mouth. Hmm? Huh? The tempura cut the roof of your mouth? What nonsense is that? Has anybody had tempura? Tempura is very soft, generally. Especially after all that sauce that she had poured on it. Because that softens up the food. And, I mean, unless you just eat the whole tail down. But I would say that she's got more going on in that mouth than she wants to say. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Girl. Get those teeth checked. Anyway. I know that's why your face swollen. So yeah, I think too. I would isolate myself from these. I didn't want to talk about anything. There was so much drama in my life. I didn't want to talk about it. Um, with them, I think it would be awkward. I don't know. But for some reason, it just we grew apart. The more I was on YouTube and. A lot of that, part of that, like, a lot of that's my fault. It's probably 50-50. Um, <laughs> takes two to tango in relation. Oh, oh, foodie, you taking a little bit of responsibility there? Gosh, I have no idea what happened with this friendship, but I can't imagine she anything else but a toxic troll. Just friendships and relationships. Friendships, romantic relationships, whatever. You know, so. And I think it's because a lot of things I would open up to you guys about, like the TMIs, are things I never really talked about with my real life friends. A lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, something because that didn't make you money, go. Especially how I'm deeply feeling about something. I just always found it easier to do that on camera. It's so weird. Than face to face with someone. I guess it's just like people being anonymous. Yeah, because that means that you can um, use that for financial gain. Why would you actually want to have real relationships with people that meant something that would require you having to be a friend because you don't gain from that, do you? You, a lot of people understand, too, that you don't want to just tell your friends everything. 
because you can appreciate that they too have stuff going on in their lives. So you, you, you know, you have to be cognizant of that as well. That's why it's good to have a therapist, somebody who's licensed and trained and can understand how to help you through things that you feel like you need to talk through. Sometimes getting a second opinion from a friend who knows you well isn't a bad thing either. But that's when you say, hey, I'd like to get your opinion on this. That's how you start that conversation, girl. I don't know if you know that, but that's usually how that conversation starts in a friendship. And you let them know quite clearly that you're wanting to know what they think about that. You also take time to listen to their days, their stories, what they're, they're going on. It just goes natural. You seem like you have to think a lot about how to construct a friendship. And at 40 years old, that's pretty pathetic. Online and saying what they want. You know, people feel comfortable coming here, calling me a fat piece of crap. Yep, no, that's because, you know what? Well, I would never it. use, I, I did, I will admit, I used the F word the other day. Oh, that's perfect. I did. And I apologize because I try not to use that type of, of language because it's isolating for people. But you, unfortunately, are a very divisive character. You say some and do some really awful behaviors. And because you do put your life on the internet and that's how you decided to make your money and you aren't, you aren't a good person. You, you just intrinsically aren't. I'm sorry to let you know at this time, looking over your life and how you're progressing and how you're managing and even learning from this situation shows that you have a lot of work to do, girl. Continue. Yeah. Most people, excuse me, most people feel more confident when they're anonymous, you know? Anyway, I go both ways. I can be on screen or if it's stuff like this where I just want to get some information out to people and I know it would take me forever to try to film it up and get the camera set up, I'll just come out here and do it this way. But I'll go live tonight after I go and have a beer with my friend. I'll be a blast. I'll be getting to watch you shove down a sub roll in your mouth talking about your diabetic floaters in your eyes being ghosts. And uh, I might be a little bit tipsy. Who knows? So I'll get royal raucous. I guess that's it. Um, <laughs> for my dinner, that was really good. I haven't had sushi in a while. But you just complained that you said it didn't fill you. Stuff. So what? Well, I guess if it has a filter, we know she's gonna go and, and pig out on God knows what in the kitchen afterwards. Probably cheese, 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 cheese. The more we cheese, 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 cheese. I don't like it. I, I barely. I like cooked fish, but if it's really fishy, no. So if it's raw, it's fishy. I don't know. People well, say you know that's not a good sign of good fish. So I don't know what fish market you're going to, girl, because I got some fresh fish here in my areas that used to be back in the day. They're no fishy smell, girl. It's, it's Probably really cheap food. Quality. It's not. It still is. I don't know. Stop buying I gas mean, stations. It's, it's, it's in the ocean, you can smell the fish. So, yeah, you can. It, it's really raw fish is just too too intense of a flavor for me. For or the, the texture alone, the texture, the mushy texture. No, nope. <laughs> no offense. I'm surprised because you mush up all your food with sauce so you can shove it down your gullet. And so, anyway, <laughs> um, I guess that's it. Uh -oh. Super delight. Giggle there. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to be doing a video talking about another important topic I want to talk about soon. Is this the ghosts and the hell, hell that you're living in that you supposedly put on your recent thing? I, okay, continue. I, I, I'm curious to know what medical scam or information you're going to come out with next. Continue. So stay tuned for that. That'll probably be out tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Well, what came out? What came out? Sorry. Sorry. This is somebody else's. <laughs> Nothing will change. I have no idea who came up. Okay. Anyway. As we saw, her video today is going to be about her ghosts and I think hell in the apartment. <laughs> so if this is the positive glow up content that she was promising us, um, yeah, no, hold pass. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get this uploaded. I got to get ready to go off and do some stuff um, in order to get ready to go live with you guys this evening. Uh, I think we're going to look at a little bit of this foodie. I wanted to try to talk about Anna's Instagram 
the glitter and lasers controversy. And then I really wanted to take a look at the Anne Boleyn meal that was a nosedive for her health. Um, but I haven't been able to get to any of this content because foodie just does not stop the madness. And I need to keep reporting this because my whole, I don't know. I don't think the other two are on quite the medical scam, though. I think Anna is kind of on a health wellness. I mean, it's a little bit scammy. I think, because I don't think she genuinely understands how to lose the weight, and which is why she is not making a lot of progress after a year. And she's real angry with everybody. So that's fascinating to me because you're trying to be like this nice person out. Uh, but she does fashion stuff. But it's the health, when you get into the health and wellness, that's when, and you're just giving out the misinformation and you're just abusing the trust of your audience. That's when. <laughs> Life and Vibe, the RN investigator will come on in and sniff out a medical scammer trying to get your heart earned cash on the internet. Why give your money away? You go take this nice vacation. I promise you, these guys are living well on your money. Just think about it. Hey, and I don't live well on your money, but I appreciate all the ads as it comes that way. <laughs> Absolutely. Very honest about the monetization of my content. I don't mind to monetize. All right, guys. Uh, if you need to skip ahead in chapters, do so. Once again, we will be back. This is Ray. This is Life and Vibe. And once again, we thank you for listening to me roast Miss Foodie. I promise you next time I won't get into the medical. We'll just roast the crud Jesus out of her. And if you want to see me do a little bit of that tonight as we discuss why a raging type 2 diabetic should not be eating an Italian sub sandwich, like I said, join me. All right, guys. Love you. Bye. <laughs>